Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. We are continuing to look at 1 Samuel uh, and uh, look at the history of God's people. Yesterday, we saw how there's a new kind of season of their history. Yesterday, we saw how they said, hey, we want a, a new kind of way of doing things as a nation. We want a king over us. We want a human to rule and reign and lead us instead of seeing God as that leader. And we're going to see what happens next. Is God told Samuel, hey, give them their request, let them do what they want to do. We're going to see that God continues to work through this, which I find so encouraging because I can't help but think about what I would do if I were in the place of God, which is actually a pretty scary thought for many reasons. But I think about if if I was in his shoes, how tempted I would be to just be like, fine, you go do your own thing. You don't want me to be your leader? Then good luck figuring out on your own and just, I'm never helping you again. I'm not going to do anything to intercede for you or assist you. And thankfully, God is much bigger than me and much uh, more gracious and merciful uh, than uh, my cynical heart is because we see that God continues to work through this situation. God continues to do God things in this situation. So God leads Samuel to go and select a new person. I love if you uh, read uh, 1 Samuel 9 and 10, I encourage you to read this. It's so amazing. Chapter 9 starts with just regular mundane things. This guy named Saul looking for his family's lost donkeys. Just so mundane and seemingly pointless. But God was at work through that. To, to create a divine appointment between Saul and Samuel where God could reveal to Samuel that Saul was to be the first king over Israel. And they get to have a conversation and a process begins of God selecting and appointing Saul as their first king. And again, God is merciful and gracious, even though his people rebelled against him, even though they asked basically for a replacement for God, say, we don't want you to rule us and lead us. We want someone else to God was still at work saying, hey, even though you've rebelled against me, I'm still seeking to bless and to help you. And, and so God continues to do God things. These divine appointments, even in how he selects a king, it's such a God thing because he selects Saul, this person from the tribe of Benjamin, this kind of uh, obscure nobody, is appointed the king over the entire nation. Not at all what they would have selected as their own. And so God works through Samuel to appoint Saul, and eventually it goes public. I don't want to read a little bit from that, is, is there is a public process. Saul and Samuel have been conversing, and Samuel says, yes, God wants you to be king, but our nation needs to be aware of this as well. So in chapter 10, verse 17, it says, Now Samuel called the people together before the Lord at Mizpah, and he said to the people of Israel, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I brought up... Israel out of Egypt, and I delivered you over the hand of the Egyptians and the hand of all kingdoms that were oppressing you. But today you have rejected your God, who saves you from all your calamities and all your distresses, and you've said to him, set a king before us. Guys, you're making a terrible decision. I want to remind you of what God has done. I want to remind you of how terrible of a decision this is, but this is what you've asked for. He says, therefore, now present yourselves before the Lord and tribes and by your thousands. So Samuel brought all the tribes of Israel near, and the tribe of Benjamin was taken by Lot. Then he brought the tribe of Benjamin near to its clans, and the, the clan of the, the matriarchs was taken by Lot. And then Saul, the son of Kish, was taken by Lot. And when they sought him, he could not be found. So they inquired again of the Lord, is there a man still to come? And the Lord said, behold, he's hidden himself among the baggage. And they ran and took him from there. When he stood among the people, he was taller than any of the people from his shoulders upward. I like tall people. And Samuel said to the people, Do you see whom the Lord has chosen? There is none like him in all the people. And the people shouted, Long live the king. So it needs to be clear that, that Samuel's not the one who has appointed Saul to be king because, well, we saw yesterday he appointed his sons to be judges and that didn't exactly go well. And so God still worked through Samuel to start this process of selection, identify Saul, but then it became very clear that God was the one selecting Saul. And the people rejoice and they say that we have a king now. And we're going to see kind of what happens through this process. We're going to see how their desire backfires. But 
I think before we get to that, we, we can't skip over the fact that God was so involved. He was so present in the midst of this process and so at work to bring about a king for the people, even though it was not what honored him most. They had rebelled against him. They had, they had really said, we don't care about you as much as we should. But he didn't choose to be vindictive or revengeful. Instead, he still sought to bless and help them. And for our life, it's the same thing. It's easy to think that when we wander off the path that God has for us, that he's up there in heaven with his arms crossed and a cross look on his face and just angry at us. But God wants to work in our life. He wants to help us. He wants to bless us. But that does require us turning to him. It requires us to say, hey, God, I, I want to come back to you. So maybe you're in a place where you've wandered away a little bit. Maybe you have veered away from being involved in church and, and being in a place of regularly worshiping him. Maybe you know that there's an area of your life you're living in sin and rebellion. Let me encourage you today to just turn back to Jesus because there's grace and forgiveness waiting for you there. He's not waiting with arms crossed, but arms open saying, come back. I want to be in community. I want relationship with you because God is full of mercy he, his steadfast love endures forever, as we see over and over again in the Old Testament. And so I hope today that you're reminded that God is full of mercy and forgiveness and grace, and that's all available to you, no matter where you find yourself, no matter what you, decisions you've made towards him. He loves you and has grace for you. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.